okay, my name is Mario Sessoni, I'm from Polytechnic in Torino. So let me go back for a, a couple of seconds on the definition, on the possible definition of tectonics uh, related to architecture. Of course, the first one is the definition, is the concept elaborated by Kenneth Frampton and uh, focusing on construction. But uh, I think that uh, uh, in the architecture of today, even the metaphoric uh, meaning related to the geological concept of uh, play tectonics play a role, is playing a role in architecture because uh, the uh, idea of uh, architecture as moved by underlying and, and by intrinsic forces is a concept that is uh, uh, of interest in many, uh, for, for many architects. And let me call, recall a third, uh, less important, but in some way significant uh, definition uh, given by Hans Selmayr, uh, we can say an apocalyptic uh, uh, criticist of architecture and uh, art, who have seen uh, the um, <coughs> tectonics in architecture as the relation between man and art. I think that uh, for starting from shell structure and mainly the contemporary and modern, I think, from in the 20th century, we can uh, focus the problem of the relation between construction, conception, and uh, analysis and uh, computation of uh, a structure and of a building. The first example is uh, an important, even if it is well known example, and it is the first dome, the first Zeiss dome realized in Jena in uh, uh, 1922. This uh, realization is very important because the shape uh, was uh, perfectly defined already in the beginning. The shape is uh, a sphere. But uh, the construction was influenced a lot by the fact that the uh, realization is over a roof and that the load should be the minimum as possible. The innovation was introduced in the uh, failsword. The failsword is that uh, intriguing uh, geodesic uh, grid. When the, this grid was realized, they understood that this grid could be used as the reinforcement itself and they even modified the original project by substituting the casting on a, on a, on a false work with grouting. So this interaction between the, the process of construction and the shape and the use of new technologies has been a very significant for this uh, early realization in uh, uh, 1922. It's uh, uh, interesting to note that uh, the patent of the, uh, the geodesic dome uh, by Buckminster Fuller dates back in 1954. The example of domes, of uh, reinforced concrete domes, uh, from the point of view of construction, takes uh, maybe its in most important uh, development in the work of the Italian architect Dante Bini. Dante Bini developed and uh, realized a lot of uh, uh, examples of these kind of buildings. He developed a, a way to construct domes, uh, reinforced concrete domes, by means uh, of uh, an inflating uh, pneumatic false work. He not only developed this, had this conceptual idea, but he developed a patent studying all the details, including the way the phases of erection should be um, articulated, the way the uh, reinforcement must be designed and built in order to satisfy the requirements, and all the steps of the procedures. I can say, maybe we can say that this, uh, uh, from the point of view of the construction, this uh, uh, example represents uh, one of the most refined and complete uh, uh, description of uh, how a dome uh, should be built. Of course, in this case, we stay in the, in the field of spherical dome. This pattern will, will be, it was uh, uh, extended even to more free form, but the most important realization are spherical. Spherical domes today, today spherical domes are mainly realized as grid shells and grid shells and not as real shells. The only example we can find in the, the picture is not the best, I'm sorry, but uh, the, uh, are uh, concrete domes used in industry. In this case, uh, again, they use uh, um, 
inflating uh, force work, but the grouting is made by inside in order to have a perfectly smooth surface. Another important example that I want to explain and that has been studied recently in a paper by Siegel, Gavon and Dilton is a, no, is a comparison between two buildings. The first one is realized in 56 and is the Lambert Airport Terminal in San Louis designed by Minoru Yamazaki and structurally developed by Anton Tedesco. When this building was finished, Felix Candela uh, decided to start from this building, taking it as a, as a challenge, to realize his project for the uh, Bacardi Ram factory in Mexico. Uh, the picture below represents the factory after the enlargement. Originally, there were only three cloister walls, uh, growing walls, sorry. Uh, the aim is very important from my point of view because while the first process is, uh, uh, is, uh, starts from the traditional approach to the design of concrete walls with uh, um, uh, edge beam stiffeners on the corners and on the drawings, the aim of Candela was to reduce the presence of the stiffeners by leaving the older, by giving all the load bearing capacity only to the shell without this kind of uh, adjoint element. He obtained that by changing the shape slightly but significantly. In uh, from these two sketches, it's possible in some way to understand because in the project of Candela, the shape becomes um, an eye part instead of a cylindrical dome, and uh, the um, Stiffeners are much more uh, thin. The behavior has been compared in, the, in, in this paper, the structural behavior, and the structural behavior is similar, so that uh, it means that this is the second solution, all oriented to obtain the structural behavior by means of the working on the shape, was a good uh, idea, and the challenge, we can say, it has been won. But not only the shape was made the difference in this case, even the way the scaffolding and the fixwork has been constructed. The first one, the first picture represents the way used in North uh, in USA and in North America, uh, based on uh, massive uh, uh, timber uh, centerings, and Anton Tedesco used this technique because he was uh, uh, confident with this kind of techniques. While for different uh, social even uh, reasons, because the workers in Mexico work in a different way than the United States, Candela could use this different uh, way to realize the first work, uh, where we can see that the straight line of the IPAR are, of course, used to, re to position the straight line elements of the scaffolding. So, again, the construction, the concept and the shape are interacting in this uh, project. And uh, what is important in this project comes out from another project that is not so uh, developed from the conceptual point of view. Uh, 